are called to take serious the last words of Jesus Christ. And under this, I have four points we are going to look at. Number one, God was sovereignly glorified in Christ's death. And secondly, you must know that there was no that there could be no other person to participate in Christ's death. And thirdly, a call to love one another. And lastly, never attempt to do kingdom work in your own strength. My purpose for this sermon is to call your attention as we begin this year to revive our love for God and for one another. Relying only on the grace of God as we work together in love, unity, and fellowship. I will begin by telling you a story about something we have heard, all of us, maybe not a story, but uh, in many African societies, when an elder our family head is about to die. Omukuruwa makabuli job wabanga alaba assembly de kuva monsi. Sometimes they are sick and there is no hope of recovering from that terrible illness. Olu soroburuwa denga ne subi edio kusu katericha aluo. They normally call their children and grandchildren and those at their hearts. Buli job batero kuita abana obodi au naba zukuru. Because he feels that he wants to speak his last wishes to this family. And normally these words are words of encouragement. They encourage those that are going to be left behind. Words of counsel. And the reason they do this is because they want those that are going to stay to remain together as one family. To remain together in unity. Not divided. Those are always the wishes of a family head, a dying family head. Just like any one of us, that's what you would wish to see your family as you are going away. As you see your days are approaching. You want to leave your people united. In love. Because when they get divided. The family will end, will end with you. In the passage before us, we have Jesus. He's speaking his last wishes to his disciples. He's talking to them. He's like giving them the, his, uh, the marching orders. Why? Because he knew very well that his death, his time had approached. And right now, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, had already gone out. He had not gone to buy them food as the chief deacon in the ministry. But he had gone to meet those who were going to kill Jesus. He had gone to receive his 30 pieces of silver. But Jesus is talking to the 11 that are remaining. And he's telling them. Time has come. 
for the Son of Man to be glorified. And God will be glorified in him. And I will be glorified in God. And he gives them this command. It's a new command I give to you. It's such a truth say, Omwana woman to Okubanga, Gurumizibwa, Elana Chitango, Kugurumizibwa, Nochita, Nechitawe, Okugurumizibwa Moye, Elamba Wechida Girechija. And this is very important to the disciples and to the Elachino. Church of Jesus Christ today. Yes, why you gave Gambo, you know, Yari Bianchis on yo. Just as you take serious the words of your dying mother, the words of your dying father, the words of your dying uncle. At heart. The same way that Jesus was giving this command because he knew he was soon leaving. Thus I gave our sermon a title, A Call to Take Serious the Last Words of Jesus Christ. And this brings us to our first point. God was sovereignly glorified in Christ's death. In his death. One would think Jesus should have said the opposite of glorification. This is not the time to talk about glorification. Because we all know that Jesus was going to be humiliated. He was going to be undressed in public. He was going to be crucified. And he's talking about being glorified in God. In God being glorified in this. The Bible says, cast is everyone who dies on the cross. But I want to tell you the same cross that was meant to humiliate Jesus Christ. It is it became the same point of his glorification. Before we proceed, let us bow our heads together. We pray for the family of Auntie Lillian. I sense there's something wrong that has happened to one of her members. Let us pray. Let us pray for her. I think the, the younger sister to, to the two girls. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this, uh, for Lilian's family. Father, we right now we dedicate this young lady into your mighty hand. You know whatever that is taking place and is going on in her life. But Lord, we pray that you intervene. Stretch forth your hand of healing that quick recovery will be realized. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, like I was saying that uh, the same cross that was meant to humiliate Jesus Christ it became the point of glorification. Right before even they leave this site of his crucifixion. The Bible says at midday. There was a great earthquake. 
And darkness took over. And everybody trembled what is going on. And at that point, many realized that indeed this was the Son of God. And those that were in the temple, those that were in the temple, they saw the veil being torn apart. All this pointed to the hand of God. And was behind all this orchestration of crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But why do you think Jesus had to go all through this? Why did he have to suffer? Yes, it was going to glorify him and him being glorified in God and God being glorified in him. But why did he have to go through this? It was because of the greater love with which he loved you and me. Yes, because we are sinners we were dead in our trespasses we were we, we wretched sinners but because of his great love he offered himself up for you and me. And that was one act of the greatest demonstration of love to our sinners. We are in 2020. And before I proceed, I want to appeal to anyone here that might be outside of Christ. Yes, you survived the 2019. Glory to God. If you are not in Christ, God is still giving you a second chance. He has given you this year. Come to Jesus Christ. So that you begin to experience this great love that he loved us with. Hallelujah. You need the Savior. Yes, we all know he was humiliated. He suffered. However much himself, he describes it as a great glorification. But if you go, you meet him without faith in him. If you ever go out of this world without the Savior, you will be humiliated the same way he was. But remember it was his great love with which he loved you and me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Secondly, you must know that there, was, there could be no other person to participate in his death. Because Neither did he require anybody to die with him. We have heard of stories of world kings that have ever lived in these different parts of the world. Those who are historians who are good at history, you know the uh, the Khedives of Israel of Egypt. The Bible calls them pharaohs. The pharaohs of Egypt. History says that once a Khedive, a king died in Egypt, they required that their beloved wives die with them. Jesus is not like that. Yes, study what you. 
He is not like that. Yes, Look at verse 33. It says, Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. He pauses it at that point. He was not expecting to be crucified with his disciples. Yes. No. He died a timely, purposeful death. Yafa. He had to die as a savior of mankind. That's why he's telling the disciples, you cannot come where I'm going. But the second part when he says that where I'm going, you cannot come, he says, but afterwards you will come. Mukatundwa kala na mazoku waga manti jengenda kakono mwete musobo la kujayo because because if he had stopped at this where I'm going you cannot come it would be a very great contradiction to us we would be asking ourselves why do we die and where are we going because Jesus said where he's, he went, we cannot go. But at this time, it was his death alone. He was going to die as a sacrificial lamb. He died in your place. He died in my place and in your place. Some people ask a question and they say, people are crazy. Why would people accept Barabbas, a sinner, a serial killer, name it all, and then offer Jesus to be crucified? My idea it was God is making. If Barabbas had died, whom would he, whom would, would he have saved? Singa Barabba ye ya famu chifocha Yesu. Ani andilo kole dua. Barabbas needed Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross for his salvation. Singa Barabba ya liye tago kufakwa Yesu. Because Jesus had come to save mankind. He had come to die for the sinners, you and me. He had come to exhibit that great love. And he says that there is no greater love than a man to lay down his life for his friends. Do you want to be part of this great love of Jesus Christ exhibited at the cross? Come to the Savior. If you are already in the Savior, He's calling us to propagate this very love. In our midst and in the world around us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we there? Amen. Thirdly, a call to love one another. Mukama a call to love one another. Mukama to yita like I told you this uh, when I was beginning about the African dying family head of elder there 
Because Jesus knows very well that his time has come. Tulaba wano Yesu nga amanyi bulunji nti akadde kikatuse. He calls his disciples. Chavai tabayigirizwa. He speaks to them. Na yogera nabo. He is comforting them. Na okubabu dabu da. Calling them okubabu children, mia. little children. Nanga abayita bana. Did you know that we are little children before God? Mbuliza mulirwana awo nti obado chimanyi nti Yesu ampita mwana. You may be 90 years of age. You may be 80 years of age. You may be 60, 70, 50. But before God, we are little children. And he speaks words of comfort. For yet a little while, I am with you. But praise the Lord that is with us always through the work of the Holy Spirit. He is with us always. He still speaks the same words of comfort. He still admonishing us. He's still calling us to love one another. And at this time, he knows his disciples' hearts. He tells them, a new command I give to you. But of course, this was not a new command. It's the same commandment we find in the, in the Old Testament. Thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. But Jesus right now is putting more emphasis to this very command. Because he had experienced his disciples and he knew them very well. He had already witnessed how greedy for power they were. At one time they had grumbled about who was going to be head. He knew very well what Sere Focus could bring in their midst. Greed. Something that had already even destroyed one of them. Because everyone was kind of focusing on himself. He's telling them, love one another. Love one another. We tend to focus on ourselves. Why love one another? Why do we have to love one another? Number one, Christ loved us. He is telling them, love one another just as I have loved you. The Bible says that having loved his own, he loved them to the end. Love one another. We live in a time where churches have become business enterprises. Maduka oba before be akwei yizamu. And I don't regret saying that. Sene nye kucho gela chino. Because that is what is happening. Kumanga chechiri wo. We live in a time where church leaders don't have any love for the congregation. And the Tum. congregation have no love for the leaders. Tuli mubisera. Nga bakule mbeze mukanisa tebaina kuwa agara edi me bakule mbeza. No wonder there is a lot of church exploitation. 
Leaders are exploiting their congregations. You enter a church, there is about 30 baskets of, the, of ABC up to so love is towards to the pastor only and his family. When we study the book of Acts, you see what what true love does. There was a time when the believers even sold whatever they had and they brought to the apostles' feet, and then the apostles also distributed everybody received. And the Bible says there was no one lacking in daily needs. Is it the same today in churches? In, you hear people say, ah, the, the, the leaders don't love us. But the love Jesus is talking about here is, is two way traffic. All of us are called to love one another. Yes, We are called to exhibit our love for one another, regardless of who you are. Hallelujah. We live in a time where God has blessed the church, especially. He, I, let me talk about Uganda. That I know very well. When we were growing up, we only had one television set, uh, television station. That was in Uganda television. And at 10 p.m. they could close and you see the curtain is. There was that anthem like it's the anthem for closing. Dun, 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 then you know it is gone. But now Almost every mega church you hear of has a television station. But what is going on on these televisions? You hear past, after watching this pastor using the other one. Then you tune to another one and this, this one is quarreling with the other one. Christ demonstrated his love. His greater love. By dying on the cross for us. And he's calling us to do the same thing. You may not die. But he wants us to love one another. He wants there is a lot of division among the churches. There is a lot of division among the congregations. You find people of the same congregation don't greet each other because they regard themselves as enemies. We have enemies. In the church. Jesus is calling you to love one another regardless of yes. what is going on. If he's telling us to love our enemies, when your enemy is angry, give him food. When he's angry, 
when he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Paul says, by so doing, it will be like a putting hot coal on their heads. What about brothers and sisters in the Lord? If you want to see ministry grow, if you want to see fellowships grow and strong, if we want to see this church more effective in the communities, we need to exhibit God's love. And the grace of God is sufficient for us to do that. For the same Christ that exhibited this grace, this, this great love to us, by which we derive our love is the same God that will provide who also has already provided the same grace. Number two, why do we love one another? Secondly, a testimony to the world. You find the pastors, church leaders, quarreling with. Uh, you were stealing my land. When I bought it, it was this way. Now, you, a pastor causing trouble in the whole community oh, because of land issues. You can imagine. The land was surveyed very well. There are milestones where they are supposed to be. But in the night, you wake up and then you remove it. You, end, you put it somewhere. You add the five feet. Peace. Is that a testimony to the world? Is that a testimony to the when the world is watching us as believers, what does the world see? We need to pray for the church of Jesus Christ. We live in the days where you go out to, have, to reach out the unreached to, for evangelism, to preach the gospel. And then they will tell you, uh, uh, you, you, you born again Christian. You Christians, uh, what do we see? Uh, I better remain a witch doctor. I better remain a Muslim. So and so is making money from his church members. So and so is selling holy water. So and so is selling seedlings for, for this big money. So and so is doing this. The other pastor impregnated a younger, a younger girl in the community. The other one who has stolen somebody's house. And that's the testimony. That's the testimony. The only sermon is you hear every day being preached. Give and it shall be added, uh, given to you. Giving is not bad. That's the only message. As if Christ called us to do business. To make business out of his church. Yes. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Number three. 
But is that the way we actually as is that the way the Christians do it in a, in the generation we are living in? Mumulembe kuno gwetulim olo abaloko la basinga ba wa yoro akwanga ba gala. Some of you have moved from church to churches. Sometimes you come here and say, ah, these people are not anointed here. Then you look for the anointed men of God. You look for the anointed men of God. And you think they love you. They don't love you. And when you see big numbers there, you say, wow, this is where I am supposed to be. And when he sees this big group or this big congregant, he also thinks about his bank account. And you think they love us. Oh, here yeah, they love us. To take a sentence of a way to take a sentence of a way to take a sentence of a way to take a sentence of a We live in a time where leaders no longer love the congregants. All they see is exploiting them. And that's why they don't want to teach the true gospel. Because when they preach the true gospel, you are going to run away. And when you run away, they will not be benefited, they will not be getting money. Is that But that's the testimony the church is giving to the world. This year we pray that God may revive his church. That the true gospel will be preached in love. That the love of Christ will be exhibited in ourselves. And if we focus to that, God is going to grow us more and more. We are going to see great and mighty things we have not even seen before. Because love is the backbone of the church. Praise the Lord. Lastly, as I wind up, yes, we can talk about love. But it takes the grace of God to do so. So we need to pray that God give us his grace to enable us to exhibit Christ's love in our midst. Because the grace of God is sufficient. Sometimes you hear people complain and complain. They don't visit me. They don't love me. When I am in trouble, no one comes. Do you tell them you are in trouble? Do you tell them you are in trouble? Do you tell them you are in trouble? Because yourself, you don't love anybody. You don't even notify anybody when you are in a problem. And you expect people to be like angels to see. Because if you do that, that's a high level that you don't love anybody. May this year be a year of people coming out of the hiding places wherever we have been. That we may revitalize our fellowships. Our love. Because that is Christ's desire. Lastly, never attempt to do kingdom work in your own strength. May the grace of God be 
chikuyambe chibera mafuta joli okola omulimu katonda gwa ku isoko kokola okama yeba zwe munko nereka ali om omumbulize owulira omoyo kyagambe kanisa Hallelujah. Mukama yeba zwe. Technology has become a problem. Like I said, there is enough grace to do whatever we need to do for the kingdom of God. We see here Simon Peter. Jesus is explaining everything. And Peter seems not to get it right. But when Jesus takes it to another level, Peter understands it. And then he says, Lord, why do you say I cannot follow you where you are going? I will let down my life for you. That is Peter. Sometimes we are very quick at pledging things we cannot do. The same Peter who walked on water and then doubted a little bit started sinking in the sea. He is now pledging to die for his master. Sometimes you may think, ah, I have love for people. But yet, it's not real love. You don't know what it means. You don't know the depth of it. This is what Peter is doing. But Jesus is telling him, he poses this question, do you love me, Peter? Sorry. He says, will you let down your life for me? But I think before Jesus poses this question to Peter, I'm just thinking, I'm imagining. When Peter said, I will let down my life for you, Jesus might have smiled inside himself. Because he knows our hearts. He knew Peter very well. And then he asked, Will you lay down your life for me? And I'm, I'm imagining Peter said, Yes, I will. Because remember, even at uh, the arrest of Jesus Christ, he was the very faster man with his dagger, with his sword to cut off Marcus's ear. Sometimes we want to do things out of our strength. And you know when the year is beginning, you also, you have bigger visions and bigger ambitions. As if it is all in your power. We need to trust God. We need to depend on God's grace. Peter thought because he was brave, he could lay down his life for Christ. But Jesus discourages him. Truly, truly, I tell you. Before the rooster crows, you deny me three times. He knows us well. Yes, sir. As we attempt to do greater things for the Lord this year, as we have bigger visions, as we seek to love one another, as we seek to fellowship 
together as we seek to serve the Lord. Let us not forget that we cannot do anything without the grace of God. May we depend on the grace of God. We will do whatever God has for us this year. We will love one another. We will have unity. We will have fellowships that are sweet. In this church we will continue to grow and grow and grow. And we will be able to even affect the community positively. May the good Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father in heaven we want to thank you again for your word. Thank you for reminding us of your great love. Thank you, Lord, to die for us. You died because of my sin, for the sins of your people. Help us, Lord, King of glory, that in the same way may demonstrate your love towards one another in this church, in the communities, even in our families, Lord. And Lord, we need your grace to be able to do that. We thank you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, since you entered this sanctuary, we have been looking at this table. The table of Holy Communion. It's a table that we should not take for granted.